first went through letters in my third year teaching and realized how much I was not doing with my students that I should be doing. So it really just helped me just really take a step back and think about how I was teaching things and really pay more attention to how the brain learns to read and the science of reading. We began our letters journey a couple of years ago and we have been able to train over 200 teachers. I have teachers that are so excited about it that they too are sharing it with other teachers within the building and I'm sure outside the building too. Their excitement makes other teachers want to have that too and that knowledge to move forward with the confidence that they know what they're teaching and they understand what their students truly need. So this must mean this part of our word is where it becomes a heart word. Hot words, hot words, what you gonna do? Learn how to read them and spell them too. I do pay a lot more attention now to the position of my mouth, teeth, tongue, and lips, and how I am pronouncing the sounds and making sure they are saying the same thing I'm saying. Touch your throat and let's see if this is voiced or unvoiced. Putnam City serves students in 18 elementary schools. We are 100% Title I, which gives us the opportunity to work with readers from all different types of backgrounds, including those that speak English as a second language, and those that come from homes that may have not had a rich vocabulary experience. We knew we needed to take a look at our curriculum and make sure all of the components were aligned with the science of reading. And we made significant changes district-wide. It helped me realize like where the breakdown in reading happened for my students each individual students instead of just the grade level as a whole. And let's intervene with that specific component of reading rather than just saying they can't read. But let's really look at why can't they read? Which part are they missing? The diagnostic assessments really aligning with instruction and that through that data, teachers are really targeting their tier one instruction and utilizing it in small groups. It has really impacted us um, not just at a classroom to classroom level or site to site level, but as a whole district. So instead of really just looking at, you know, what reading level um, our, our kids on, we look at what skills those students have mastered and what skills those students need to work on. We had a few students that have transferred this year during the pandemic from an, another school in the district. And the instructional coach has been able to share with me their diagnostic assessment data. And I'm able to just forward that right to the teachers in my building and they know exactly what it means. And so when a kid moves from one school to the other, you don't have any time lost. And even our, our title teachers are using the same vocabulary as our classroom teachers. So they're really able to reinforce what the kids are getting in their tier one and tier two instruction with their teachers. I'm the STEM teacher. Going through letters really kind of gives me the vocabulary that I can talk to teachers about their students when they're in my room and things that I notice. So when I'm teaching those big, huge science and math words, we break them down into morphemes. We break them down into syllables. We talk about the phonemes. So I think that letters really extends out. It's not just what I'm doing in my classroom. It's a building-wide culture that kind of starts to take over. We have had opportunities to train teachers and instructional coaches to be facilitators. Our 100% virtual, we went over the Val Valley. We were able to get text and books in the hands of our students at home, and they were able to do those activities with text in hand. We are in awe of what we can see our kids do through the practices that we are seeing in our classrooms. And we are excited about the future as we get more and more teachers trained. 